uh, continuing on from this, we've worked out RA um, before as 58.9 recurring, and then we worked out RB as 81.1 recurring. Um, so making it look a bit little neater, um, that's the original question, and then there's a UDL running across. And we're just going to draw a shear force for this now. Uh, the magnitude of the UDL is 10 kilonewtons for every meter run and the distances before um, this overhang is a meter that's one and a half meters from RA to the 40 two meters to there, one meter to there and one and a half meters from there let me check that's correct, I think it is yep um, <coughs> the UDL then draw, start off with your zero axis line for the shear force so this is a shear force diagram. We'll do bending for this in another uh, video because there's some calculations to do for that. Uh, so we're just going to roughly line things up. Now you would draw this to scale. I'm just drawing a sketch. So it'll draw yours to scale or use you know an app or something. So we've got 10 kilonewtons per meter acting over one meter. So from this point, we're going to have gone down. Oops. Of magnitude of 10 minus 10 if you like 58.8 is RA so the next arrow coming up so we're gonna have to come up 58.8 sorry 58.9 and we're already at minus 10 so that's gonna be 48.9 recurring if you like at this point positive we're gonna slope down again for the UDL that acts over this distance one and a half so 10 times one and a half, that's going to have to have come down uh, <coughs> 15 from 49.9 recurring, if you like. 48.9 um, recurring, what am I talking about? So 48.9 recurring less 15 gives you 33.9 recurring at that point. Then we're dropping down 40. So 33.9 recurring, take off 40. Gives us a negative answer of 6.1. That'll be recurring. We're sloping down again, this UDL bit, 2 metres, so that's down another 20. So minus 6.1, come down a further 20, is going to be minus 26.1. Uh, we've got a 20 kilonewton point load pushing straight down. So we're going to have to come down a further 20, so that's going to be minus 46.1 recurring. Um, and then we're sloping uh, for one metre this bit at UDL, which will be 10. So we'll have to come down another 10, um, which will be minus 56.1. Then we're coming up at RB 81.1, so that's going to bring us way up here. Um, so we've gone from minus 56.1 recurring. Uh, hang on. And we're adding on <coughs> um, 81.1 recurring. Brings us positive by ab about 25, bang on. And then we've got a UDL for one and a half metres sloping down. And it's 10 kilonewtons for every one metre. So we're going to have to come down 15. It's 10 times one and a half. So we've, come, we've dropped down 15 meaning that that distance, that number there must be 10 because we've come 15 from 25 and then we've got a down arrow of 10 taking us to exactly 0 so it starts at 0 and ends at 0 and that people is the shear force diagram for this uh, pretty complex beam the point of maximum shear is here Minimum shears here, sorry. <coughs> um, I'm going to show you, forget that for a minute, because I'm going to show you how that correlates with bending uh, in, a, in a bit. But yeah, that's how you draw the uh, shear force diagram for that uh, beam. So yeah, you notice the UDL is 10 kilonewtons evenly all the way across. So the slope of these lines wants to be parallel. Right? They, they fall at the same rate, it's the same pitch if you like. Um, but yeah, use an app or a CAD package or something to draw it properly. Um, 
there you go so that's shear force diagram for a complex beam